Hey guys, I'm Roland the Tech Fusist, and this is going to be a short video of me basically just explaining some of my first issues with the Google Pixel 2 XL. So, I've had this phone for about two weeks now, so I really just want to give you guys an idea about what my experiences are like and what you should expect if you decide to go for this. Before I go any further, I just would like you to know that I'm not going to be talking about all of the display issues, all of the hissing noises and any other problems that this phone is known for. I simply don't have them, so I don't have any reason to talk about it. So let's jump straight into it. If you've been on the site you've likely come across these issues that I'm going to be mentioning right now. So if you don't want to watch this video, that's fine, just skip ahead wait for the next one or just go watch someone else but this is what I'm going to be talking about so first I should probably mention the lack of option to change the notification volume and this alone really drives me crazy any phone that I have previously owned had a setting in the menu where you could actually change the notification volume and on the pixel that is simply missing what, instead what you get is a two-in-one solution where the ringtone and the notification sounds are set on the same level and you don't have control over which one is set to a higher loudness or volume than the other. I'm not sure about you but I prefer my ringtone to be nearly maxed out so you know that kind of makes sure that whenever it's on a table and someone calls me I can actually hear it and just pick it up and answer the call. As opposed to notifications, when you actually have it on a table, let's say you're working on a project that's really important, let's say you're working for something that's due in, in a couple of days for the university, and you just keep getting those loud notifications. That's really, really annoying, and it can actually drive you insane. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Um, so the lack of option to change those loudness and volume levels in the settings is, is really annoying. I definitely uh, would like to see that coming to the Pixel phones in the future because I know that it, it, that feature is available on Samsung, on LG and basically all of the giant manufacturers devices and flagships and even mid-ranges and low-end devices. So what's up Google? <laughs> Where's my option to change the notification volume? I feel like that's a really simple fix, but oh well. And there's also not even a single solution that I can recommend. So there is only really one simple solution that's kind of, let's just say, not the best. The only way you can kind of fix this is by going into the settings and turning down the ringtone volume that way when someone is going to call you let's say you're at a cafe and someone calls you, you might not hear it but at least you won't get blasting loud notification sounds so that's something to consider second is the extremely sensitive proximity sensor that can be found on the top you can also find an image on the website where I show you where you can find the sensor on your device if you have the Pixel 2 but it's basically just below the speaker on both devices it's good to know so I have already reported this to the Pixel team but you might be facing the same issue that I am facing so what the issue is is that the proximity sensor that can be found on the top of your device is extremely sensitive so when someone calls you you pick up the phone, you try to talk to them like a normal person then let's say you want to put it on a loudspeaker because let's say you have to find some notes or it's just more convenient to you you take it down to anywhere you put it on, I mean you try to put it on a loudspeaker but then you will realize that it's just on a black screen and you can't do anything but you can still touch the buttons now that's the issue, it's the proximity sensor it's the proximity sensor that is being covered by dust or, or anything really that covers the whole sensor itself. So due to that, the display will not turn on when you put it elsewhere off your face. 
So, if you have a tempered glass screen protector, you and you have a cutout for your tempered glass, I will show you a close-up photo of this. Then, all you can do is literally just wipe it. Try to go in deep into the cutout, like I have, or if you don't have one, then just try to clear the screen protector. Hopefully, that will fix your issue. And then, basically, just unlock your phone, and then it should be working again. That's just something a very annoying feature, if you can call it a feature, that you just have to take care of whenever you use this phone and you try and call someone and you try to use the phone while being on a call so that's the only solution to that there is also another solution that you kind of can use in order to troubleshoot if you have just simply a faulty proximity sensor or it's actually working but it's just covered by dust or any anything like a screen protector etc so i will link the application down in the description so you can go ahead and check it up and see if you have a faulty proximity sensor or it's, just, or it's just covered by dust. So when you will open the application you will have an option to go to the proximity settings and see if it's set to far or near. Um, if it changes you're good to go that means that your proximity works. If it doesn't change and is set to near or far at all times then it means you might have a proximity issue so you might have to return it back to the shop or a good thing is that you might only have to take off the screen protector from your device and see if it works obviously give it a good wipe or if you have a, uh, a tempered glass screen protector on like I do and you have a cutout or if you don't just give it a good wipe hopefully that will solve your issue um, there really isn't anything else that you can do at the moment we can only just hope that Google will fix the sensitivity of the proximity sensor in the future and hopefully it will change and become normal again. So the point of this video is mainly to let you know guys my personal issues with this device and I didn't even mention the charging speed which is rather slow but I guess that makes sense if we want the batteries to last longer in the future. I certainly plan to have this phone for about two years, at least one and a half. It works really well so far, it's everything I expected. So in that kind of sentence I think it makes sense to have a little bit slower but hopefully last longer kind of method methodology. So in those terms I think it's actually very usable and still kind of relatively fast so yeah the point of this video is to highlight my main issues and concerns with this device so far that I had in the past two weeks and I really just want to let you know guys what my experiences are I want to be open about these um, also the good things that I experienced with this phone which is going to be coming in the next probably two weeks in a future review so stay tuned for that so if you have any of these issues I would like to ask you to go ahead to the pixel forums and on your phone there's a option where you can report some feedback and tell Google about these issues um, the more the more it gets reported the faster it will be implemented in future Android versions and hopefully 9.0 or whatever it will be called. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see these short videos in the future and also don't forget to check out my website techfusist.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel Techfusist. Um, like this video if you liked it or dislike if you disliked it. Thank you for watching, see you next time.